definitely expand on any points. All right, so uh, the first one, we're, we're gonna go over uh, four ways to do this today, but the first one is Zoom. So probably the most important thing to know about Zoom is it is the largest video chat thing we're gonna be going over today. Um, and a lot of schools are using it and a lot of businesses are using it. So this is one of the ones that is the most full featured and is the easiest to use just because there are so many tutorials out there for it. Um, just as a example, I've thrown in a Zoom support article into the, into the uh, presentation. And just to kind of show you what you can expect whenever you search for help. Uh, so this one is just Zoom's page on joining a meeting, which I mean, none of you probably need at this point because you were able to join this meeting in the first place. But uh, just to show you, they are very short and sweet videos. I will actually uh, share my audio in just a second. So we can watch this. We will be going over how together. to join. Um, this is one minute and nine seconds. So these are very short. They're under five minutes and they're very like straight to the point and succinct. Today we will be going over how to join a Zoom meeting. We've got a couple options, but we'll go through the first one via email invitation. Once you receive an email invitation for a Zoom meeting, you can quickly view the join link from the invitation. You can click this invitation and you will be prompted to either download or launch Zoom. If you see this message waiting for hosts to start this meeting, that means the host has not started the meeting on their side yet, and you can go through while you're waiting on them, test your computer audio, select your input levels, select your video, and go through and select your virtual backgrounds. Your second option is to directly join Zoom meetings from the Zoom application. You can view all your upcoming meetings under the Meetings tab and quickly select Join. If you have any questions on joining a meeting, please contact us at zoom.s. Thank you. All right, so I just wanted to show you that as a very short way for you to get important information and to kind of show you the format in which the videos on their how-to site or their help center are uh, formatted. Um, and then as you scroll down, they will have different things you can click on if you want further information. So uh, with that out of the way, um, Zoom accounts. So I'll open up a new tab and just search for Zoom. Zoom.us is where you're gonna be going to. And then once you're here, pretty much everything you care about is in the upper right-hand corner. So you can see right here, there is a sign in button. This is where we'll click. Now, uh, this is if you have a Zoom account. If you don't have a Zoom account, you can click here, which is sign up for free. You'll just do your date of birth. and then your email address. Click sign up and it will send an email off to have you actually log in. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to get it. One thing to note is make sure if you don't get it for like five or 10 minutes, uh, check your spam folder. So if you see, I've gotten the Zoom account sign up assistant. So I'll click on that. 
I will click on sign in. Email address. And I already have a Zoom password, unfortunately. So I will log into my account. And this is just to show you what your options are once you've signed in. So once again, we're at zoom.us. We created an account and we signed into that account. And now we have these options. So I can go to schedule a meeting, join a meeting and host a meeting. All right, so schedule a meeting will allow you to schedule a meeting in advance. So if, for example, you want to have a meeting with a bunch of people tomorrow or today at 530, you can say family for like a family get together topic. Pardon my spelling. Uh, description. And then when. So we will just click on the calendar icon, make sure it's on today. We will schedule it for five o'clock PM. The duration of it will be two hours. Eastern time, require meeting password. So the people who join the meeting will need to have the meeting password. You can set it to anything you want. And then hit save. So now we have a meeting scheduled. So now that we've scheduled a meeting, you may be asking, well, we scheduled a meeting, but how do I get other people to join the meeting? which is a natural progression. What we do is we have this join URL right here and we will just copy it, copy meeting invitation, copy to clipboard, and now we will just go and compose a message to whoever and add that information in to the email. So what it will tell the pe person who gets the email is the topic, the time, the link they need to click to join, and the password. And you just send that off and anyone who gets this information will be able to join your meeting. All right, one thing to note, is uh, Zoom has for this outbreak through this event, uh, Zoom has made free accounts a lot more powerful than they normally would be. So they have changed the 40 minute limit on free accounts to not have a limit. And they have also allowed you to add a password to your meetings among some other things. So. I will put this in the in the document that we will share. Mm -hmm. But basically, that's how you set up a Zoom meeting. So now, let's go back to zoom.us. Here's how to host a meeting. Sorry, uh, Zoom. All right, so 
so we have schedule a meeting, join a meeting, and host a meeting. So join a meeting, all this will do is you can take that link that we just had, put it in here, click join, and your Zoom meeting will start. That's pretty much as difficult as join a meeting is. Now, when we go to host a meeting, you may wonder why do we care about hosting a meeting whenever we can schedule a meeting. When you host a meeting, it just instantly starts the meeting as soon as you start it. It's like, we want a meeting, we want to call now, we want to talk now. You just go host a meeting and it's all set up. It will download something and then you will just start Zoom and your meeting will start. And then from within Zoom, you'll be able to share the information for other people to join. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because Zoom hides itself from being uh, shared. Do we have any questions on Zoom? I'm gonna unmute everyone, hold on a second. Okay, any questions for, for Tim on Zoom? I don't, I don't see his picture, I see yours. He's shy. What can I say? I am shy. He's actually in his bathrobe, we know. So that's probably why he's got the video off. Exactly. He's a very nice voice, though. Well, I will say I don't have a, uh, a camera connected to this computer that I'm currently using. I have a question. Yes. It, it was on the news last night about people, person, whatever, bombing the, Zooms, the Zoom meetings and sending inappropriate materials so they were asking certain schools to stop using them uh, using zoom so what you're running us through is this protected from that happening like because we're invited to be part of this or we joined but we asked to be part of this meeting were those somehow set up in a different way that it didn't provide any pr protection between the teacher and the student or student? yes uh, great question. So one of the issues with Zoom is it is the largest and most recognizable video platform for this. So you'll have most of people uh, who want to kind of mess around with people doing video conferencing. Uh, they'll be attacking Zoom just because it's such a well-known name. Uh, if, you'll, if you remember the link I just added, in the in the um in the presentation this is zoom's update to how they're addressing that so mainly the issue was free accounts were creating meetings that didn't require a password and then they were posting it which meant that anyone who saw the meeting would be able to just join it immediately. So you can do, yes, Mary? Oh, sorry. Oh, you heard me. Uh -huh. yeah. um, there's not only passwords, but uh, wait rooms. Yes. Waiting rooms. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So one thing that uh, free accounts can now do is they can have wait rooms. Uh, what wait rooms are, um, I don't think we had one for this meeting. No, we but didn't. basically, it's a room that everyone gathers in, and then the meeting organizer chooses people to allow into the meeting. And if you set up and use the wait room, only people who you want to join the meeting get to join the meeting. Uh, unfortunately, again, I can't show you a wait room because we're using Zoom, uh, but but the other link um, I had here shows you what it would look like. So I'm just going to quickly. You will be prompted to this message waiting for. Um, if you can see this, this is the meeting that people will see. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, that's just wait. The host to start this meeting. That means the host has not started the meeting on their video. Uh, sorry, I had a different video that showed that. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, 
but I might not be down. To okay, so. <laughs> I mean, I'm watching. If you can kind of see this <laughs> right here. Sorry about the small picture. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but basically, what it allows is one person is waiting to join the room. And if you're the one who set it up, you will have a admit or a remove, admit or remove button. So you can only allow people who you know should be in the meeting to join the meeting. The other way to get a, to kind of make Zoom more secure is to have the password, which is now on by default. So people can only join your meeting if they have the password. And are the people identified by, I mean, how will the host necessarily know who they're admitting? Um, because people will add their name to the meeting. So for example, I see, you know, your name is Deborah Star NH or Deb Star NH. Yeah, which is not my name. Yeah, but <laughs> theoretically you would know you know, or recognize someone's picture or what they call themselves. Okay. And you can also chat with someone before allowing them into the room. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you see someone with like just random letters and numbers, um, probably not a real person, unless you know someone who really likes random letters and numbers as their name. And Tim, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Another security feature is not to share allowed shared screening other than the host so that nobody can take over your screen and show various things that you don't want to be seen in a meeting. Uh, Would you just explain a question, that a little that, bit more? Yeah, is that up to the host to prevent sharing of uh, guests? Yes. Yes, you, you, have, you have the ability to have only the host sh share a screen or multiple participants. So you can control who shares. And that is, there's a video in the help under Zoom, um, under uh, support there, which is where Tim is giving you the links to the various videos. There's one on managing meetings. Uh, I think it's, audio video and sharing maybe or yeah up at the up at the top tim audio video and sharing under gets getting started and there's um a video on uh okay um i know where i know that it's there but i'm not sure exactly where so we'll we'll find that and put it in to the notes so you have it but it's, it's a nice video on the various features that a host has on how to run a meeting. And I don't know, for some people, um, before the meeting started, one of the messages I kept sending, or I sent Mary, was, can you please let me share my screen? Because she has it enabled mm -hmm. to not let people share their screen. Mm -hmm. So it's I not had that to, I don't trust you all, but. Yeah. I had to wait until Mary, um, allowed me to do this, I which like is just, control. yeah. <laughs> um, it, I mean, it's, it's, you can lock it down to the point at which it shouldn't be an issue, but the number one way you can have Zoom, uh, use Zoom safely is just not post the meeting link. Just send it to the, just send it to the people who you want to be in the meeting. So basically, don't do what we're doing. <laughs> um, Tim, I have a question, just simple. Yeah. Um, I've, I've used it, and I've always set up a meeting before. But um, what is host a meeting? Is that when you just want to use it right in the moment? Yes. Uh, that's immediate. I'm starting a meeting right now. OK. Um, you can do that from either uh, here online, or you can do that within the Zoom client that's on the desktop. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you the Zoom client on the desktop because no one sees the screen in front of my Firefox window right now. 
Okay. Because so Zoom I, hides itself. I just posted the link to the meeting control in chat, um, but we'll, Tim will grab it and put it into the slides before I send them to you. Okay. There we go. Okay, perfect. You're fast. Yep. All right. Uh, good questions with Zoom. Whoops. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, when I've used it before, I've seen a screen. If I have everybody, if I want to see everybody, I see a screen of 25. And then suppose I have 75 people. I have it on three different screens that I can scroll to. Is, is yeah. 25 the largest number that you can see at once? Um, I don't actually know the largest number you can see in, um, what's that view called, in grid video? Uh, I don't actually know. I've, I've okay. never had a meeting that's not shown everybody's face in grid video. I was in a meeting yesterday with 72 people and <coughs> it was about 25 people that were on Yeah, it's a five screen. by five. Yeah. So I think that's probably it. Okay. Good questions. And if, if anyone thinks of any questions, um, we can definitely go back because uh, this is, we're planning on this being slightly shorter than the normal ones we do. Um, but we can add, but I'll, I'll still be around for like two hours, so. Just as a newbie user of Zoom, yep. I have to encourage people to use it because I've had, my husband and I have had many cocktail hours with friends who we don't see, usually see that are in other parts of the country. And as a result, we've increased our social connection with our friends mm -hmm. who we wouldn't have been in touch with anyway. So um, I really encourage people to start using it, even just with two or three other people. I also use it with my siblings who are in four different states. And um, it's just, what we've found is using Zoom, we're all connected much more than we were before this all happened. You know, the other thing too is that I live in rural Hancock and uh, cell phone service isn't great. And I actually find the audio of talking through Zoom much more reliable than being yeah. on a cell phone. Yeah. Yes. Well, you have to have a good Wi-Fi connection. Well, I have DSL through my telephone line, so it's it's not great, but it's better than the cell phone. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. And I'll definitely agree with that. Um, I know a lot of family members and people ask to me, "What should we use to talk?" Uh, now that everyone seems to, you know, even though we only saw family members like twice a year, but now we want to talk every week. So uh, we all just jump on Zoom and I'm not even the one setting them up. Mm. It's other people who are sending me links, which is fabulous. So <laughs> as long as you just play with Zoom, um, even if you just have two computers and, you know, two people, uh, just play around with it and you'll get far more familiar with it and comfortable using it. All right, um, another option you can use is Google Hangouts. So a good question is why would I use, oh, sorry. So one more thing with Zoom. Uh, Zoom, you can use it on your iOS devices. So your I, um, iPhones, your iPads, you can use it on your Mac computer and you can use it on a Windows computer. So basically you can use Zoom on anything, which is one of its benefits. With Google Hangouts, once again, you can use it on anything. Um, the negative thing with Google Hangouts is Google has a habit of getting rid of its pet projects at some point Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to get rid of Google Hangouts in 2019, but it hasn't. So I have no idea if or when Google Hangouts will ever leave us. But we, we had a family get together that was originally with Google Hangouts, yeah. and it wasn't working. So they, we switched to Zoom, huh. which worked fine. And another thing I will say is... Google Hangouts 
is very easy if you have a Google account. It works well, but Zoom has better audio and visual than Google Hangouts. So if you care about that, which I imagine, why wouldn't you care about that? <laughs> um, I would say use Zoom over Google Hangouts, but I'm still gonna show it as an option. Okay. So Google Hangouts, how do you do Google Hangouts? Very easy. Do you have a Gmail account? If so, you have access to Google Hangouts. You can go here, find Google Hangouts and click on it right here, click. But the link to it is hangouts.google.com. So it is incredibly easy. All you do is you hit the video call button. And now you just type people's names or email in there and it will send them invites to your Google Hangout. That's it. Sorry, just a minute. Google yeah. Hangouts is done, set up and ready to go. <laughs> um, any questions on Google Hangouts? Basically, um, I have a quick you, question. Google, yeah. uh, uh, Tim, do the uh, invites also have to have an email account, a Gmail account? Um, no, but they will be hinted heavily. <laughs> Google will hint at them heavily that they should sign up with a Google account. <laughs> so basically, yes. Okay. Um, one thing to note is if you notice whenever I started this, uh, a little thing popped up in the top left asking me to share my microphone you do have to hit allow for camera and microphone for any of these to work. Well, I mean, if you want to be seen or heard, but make sure you don't hit, don't allow, because then you'll be in a meeting and very confused as to why no one can hear you. <laughs> so hit allow. Okay. Oh, I have my, my picture from Facebook, but I don't have a live picture. Why is that? Um, because you have your video turned off, possibly. Okay, all right, thank you. If you yep. wanna turn your video on, Janet, you just take your cursor down to the bottom of the screen, you'll get a toolbar. I see. And you'll see video. a video camera. Yep. So, there we go. Um, Tim, okay, Google Hangouts. Go. Thank you. Sure, good to see you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tim, Google Hangouts has end-to-end -end encryption, right? Yes. Okay, that's a good thing. Yep. Um, one other good thing is Google is, the plan was for Google to, to transition to meet, to meetings, um, which is for their paid clients with G Suite accounts, which I won't go over or go into, but basically they've made it into an enterprise application. So all of the security that goes into an enterprise application is also in Hangouts, so it is fairly secure. Tim, what is the security of Zoom? As I understood, that didn't have too much security at first, and they're yep. getting more. Uh, their security is currently a working on it banner. No. Um, that's not to be flippant, uh, but basically no. Zoom, uh, on the top banner of their page, we have developed resources to help you through this challenging time. Click here to learn more. They go over some of their security measures mm. that they've added. Also, if you Google Zoom security, uh, you'll see a lot of things from fairly recently on how to keep these things secure and people saying like, don't use Zoom. So not to be alarmist, um, Zoom is as secure as you make it. If you have the waiting room set up, if you have a password on your Zoom meeting, and if you don't publish your Zoom meeting on like a web page, you're probably gonna be fine. How do you now, set up a password? Uh, good question. Do uh, 
Um, basically, as you are creating a meeting, uh, unfortunately, I can't show you, uh, there will be a little option to add a password. Okay. It's, it's fairly obvious. Um, there will be a drop down menu and you can add password to it. And you can make it as complex or not as you want. Um, but a lot of, from what I was viewing, that people were kind of getting into Zoom meetings, they were meetings with, as soon as someone clicked the link, they got in and they didn't have any sort of moderation. And then people were sharing their screen and doing the explicit images. Um, so if I'll go back to schedule a meeting right here, you can see right here, meeting password. Require a meeting password is checked. And then I can type in a password here and it can be whatever. So now people need the link. So personal meeting ID and password. So um, the idea is you send out an email to people that you want with the meeting ID and you let them know what the password will be. And yeah. you can you can actually just on when you have when you have the meeting, you can copy that invitation and just paste it into an email. It's very simple. Mm. Yep. And and what's the difference between your personal meeting ID and the meeting ID? Uh, so if you're using a free account, uh, there isn't really much of a difference. I'm not. Um, okay. So basically a, your personal meeting ID for your account uh -huh. is just used for really, really quick meetings. So if I went to zoom, uh, zoom and went to my account and went to host a meeting, that would be with my personal ID. Okay. Uh, what I can do is I can schedule a meeting which doesn't use my personal ID, which will use the meeting ID, which okay. is generated automatically. Okay. And what this allows you to do is if I have a meeting scheduled for five, uh -huh. it means people can start joining the meeting at like 445. It just won't start until five. Okay. Whereas, so I can be on a call and I can be running late to my own meeting <laughs> and still be, and still have that meeting up. So people uh, don't join and say like meeting not started. Okay, good. Thank it you. It also means that theoretically, if I'm in an area where I don't have, um, where I'm not actually going to be in the meeting because I don't have cell service or whatever, I can still set up a meeting for my family to join. If you use the personal meeting ID or the meeting ID? The meeting ID, which okay, is good. generated automatically. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so once again, Google Hangouts. If you are tightly ingrained with your Google account and everyone else you know has a Google account, then Google Hangouts works great. If not, um, I really can't see a reason to necessarily use it over other options, just because of the video and call quality. Uh, FaceTime. So uh, why would you use FaceTime over Zoom? Well, one reason is you do not see FaceTime in the news for not having security. So FaceTime is one, super simple, and two, Apple takes privacy incredibly seriously. Uh, you can accuse Apple of many, many things, but yeah. not being secure is not one of the things you can accuse them of. They are probably one of the most secure ways to communicate. So why wouldn't you use FaceTime? Well, you wouldn't use FaceTime because it's essentially iPhone and iPad only. I have an Android phone, I cannot use FaceTime. So if every single member of your family has an iPhone, FaceTime is a great tool. Also, 
if you remember the Zoom video we watched, I just want to show you what a FaceTime video looks like in terms of the how-to. Just to show you like how good the quality of their production is. Bring the group chat to life with group FaceTime. To use FaceTime with more than one person, you'll need a supported device running iOS 12.1 or later. Check the link in the description below to see if your device supports group FaceTime. Oh, and you'll want to have a few friends who can use group FaceTime too. One way to start group FaceTime is from messages. Tap messages, then open or start a message with the contact or group you'd like to call. Next, tap on the group name or contact at the top of the message, then choose FaceTime from the drop-down menu. This will start a FaceTime call with everyone in the message. Each friend in the call will appear on screen in their own tile. To add someone new to the call, swipe up from the handle at the bottom of the screen, tap Add Person, and type in a name. Tap Add Person to FaceTime to invite them to join. You can have up to 32 people in a group FaceTime, so don't be shy. Invite your whole <laughs> crew. As newcomers join, their FaceTime tiles will appear on the screen. The tile of the person speaking will get larger automatically, so you can easily keep up with the conversation. Want to have a little fun? Tap effects. Tap the Animoji icon. All right, so basically, <laughs> one, the production quality on that video immediately makes me want to use FaceTime over Zoom, like right now. But uh, realistically, they do have a limit of 32 people, which for talking with family members probably isn't an issue, but for things like a class or like a webinar or something like that would be an issue. Uh, the other issue is you can't really share your computer screen with it. Um, but if everyone has, you know, an iPad or an iPhone, FaceTime is great. And as you saw in the video, it is fairly simple to use. I don't believe there's a way to schedule a FaceTime meeting. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's more of like a everyone show up at the right time and start the meeting kind of thing. Um, any questions on FaceTime? No, and I'm actually, I so I have an Android phone too, and everyone in my family has um, iPhones. So I can actually do it on my computer too, which is nice. And then you can, it's larger and easier to see. So it works, but you have to have a Mac product. Yeah, you have to be a part of the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. All right, um, and again, I've done all of the quality or I've used all of these um, extensively uh, this past week and for one of these today. Um, and the quality of the video and audio on FaceTime was the same or better than Zoom. So there's that. Um, but just in terms of if you have an Apple product, it's really well integrated and very simple to use. And I highlight that by saying super easy. <laughs> um, and honestly, <clears throat> This how-to video is basically all you need, and it is just over two minutes long. But any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, if you think of anything going forward, feel free to jump back and ask. Uh, the last one we're going to do a brief look at is, I believe it's pronounced Jitsi and um, Mary and Corinne actually told me about it. Uh, so one of the positive things about it is it's open source. One of the negative things about it is it can be complicated. So buckle up, <laughs> we're going on a wild ride. <laughs> All right, uh, once again, uh, Jitsi does have tutorial videos. 
um, its videos are not up to the same production quality as Apple. So take that as you will. But we will open the Jitsi webpage. Uh, so it's jitsi.org and it's a multi-platform open source video conferencing application. Uh, you can use this on your Mac computer, you can use this on your Windows computer, you can use this on your Android phone, and you can use it on your iPhone or iPad. So it hits all the boxes, anyone connect, can connect with anyone. So I did say that it was complicated. Mm -hmm. But however, they have a option to make it less complicated, which is what we'll be doing. If we go to jitsi.org, you hit start a call. Now, one thing to notice is I have not signed in with an account, I have not created an account, and I have not told Jitsi anything about what I'm doing. So start a new meeting. Uh, this is my new meeting. So uh, I just type in the name of a meeting and I hit go. One thing you note is connect your calendar to view all of your meetings in Jitsi. I can click on this button and I can connect a calendar with my Gmail account or my Microsoft account. And then you can have this kind of, you can do the meeting thing where you sign, set up meetings um, before they start. And you can just join whenever they, whenever you want. So not gonna do that yet. And I will hit go. Allow. So uh, again, I have not signed in and I have not given them any information. Uh, fail to access my camera. I do not have a camera on this computer, so okay. So this is my new meeting, is a meeting. Now you may ask, how do I get other people to join this thing? Well, that's pretty easy. You press the I button in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and it will give you the information just like Zoom does. If you notice, uh, I don't know if you can actually see this, but password none. So I can click add a password to add a password to this meeting. So now I have a password. I have a link to the meeting where I can send that I can send to people. So here, let me copy this and I'll add it to a notepad so people can see it. Um, font, let's make this huge. So that's the link to the meeting. And this is all of the other information. Uh, so Jitsi also gives you a dial-in, which is really, really nice. This is for people who don't have smartphones or just want to use like a landline. All they have to do is just dial this number, enter this pin, and then they can connect to the meeting. I have added a password to it and the password is test. So you can't see this, but I am going to connect to the meeting with my phone just so you can see what it looks like and so people can see me because I feel like that's very important. Right, Mary? Mary? You're muted, Mary. Yes, it is important, Tim. Thank you. All right, so this is my new meet, meeting. Uh, and I just downloaded the app from the uh, Google Play Store because I have an Android. Uh, once I join the meeting by just typing in, this is my new meeting, it asks me for my password, which is test. And then, and then I... I I'm in the meeting. I just needed to turn off my audio on my phone. All right. 
So this is my meeting. And that's me. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim. Can you put the meeting ID back up and I'll join on my phone? Sure thing. All right. And anyone can join us if you want. Okay. But from this point, it's very much like a normal meeting, like a Zoom meeting. So I'm just letting Mary get connected. I don't think this is going to work. Sorry. Is, is the video and audio in Jitsi as good as um, Zoom? Yes. Uh, so you're viewing my screen through yeah. Zoom. So yeah. the audio is going to be a little bit less and the video is a little going to be a little bit choppy. Or not the audio. The audio is going to be fine. The video will be a little bit choppy. But from my viewpoint, it's good. Um, one thing Jitsi uh, prides itself on is its low network impact, uh, which essentially is a fancy way of saying it takes less speed to connect. So the video and audio quality should be pretty good. And it is. So Tim, we just had a question about, can you just sort of Go back over the advantages to Jitsi. Uh, so the advantages of Jitsi, all right, I'm gonna turn this off. All right, I was hearing myself twice. So uh, basically the advantages of using Jitsi are twofold. One, uh, no one's ever heard of it. So people aren't randomly Zoom bombing Jitsi meetings. Uh, the other advantage is that it was kind of built from the ground up to be open source and secure. So it has end-to-end -end encryption. It has all of the bells and whistles that <laughs> Zoom is working on. Uh, the other positive with Jitsi is, let me go back. Uh, where does it say this? Uh, so Jitsi was bought by 8x8. Eight 8x8. Uh, you may not have heard of them, but 8x8 is essentially uh, 8x8 and, um, wow, what is the other thing called? One sec. Uh, Ring Central. 8x8 and Ring Central are the two biggest phone providers for businesses, for schools, for anywhere. Um, so they have a lot of technology invested in security and kind of enterprise level support. So uh, Jitsi has a lot of money behind it. So it's pretty good. Uh, now I did say that a negative to Jitsi was the learning curve. That is only the case if you want to set up your own Jitsi server, which I guarantee you right now, pretty much no one in this room besides me even thought about doing that. <laughs> I'm assuming. Um, so while I said it was complicated, what I just showed you is as complicated as it needs to be. Is there any charge for Jitsi? Uh, no. Uh, and I have no idea how they make money. Um, a lot of these open source things you can donate and you can pay for support. Um, but using Jitsi as just like a personal level, um, I don't think it really, there's any reason for you to pay. Great. That being said, I don't want to give people the impression that I'm pushing this service that you've never heard of. <laughs> Um, Zoom works great and people have heard of it. Uh, by now, probably most people you know 
have at least heard of Zoom and a lot of them have Zoom already installed. Sometimes it can be annoying to kind of be the person to say, hey, I found this. It's the same or better. Why don't we switch to it, you know, and force everyone else to use a new application. But if for some reason you see something in the news that makes you not want to use Zoom, uh, Jitsi works as an alternative. Thank you. Wonderful. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, any advantages to using Jitsi? I think that's what Mary just yeah. asked me to, yeah. Um, other advantages to Jitsi are the name sounds cooler, <laughs> more cultured <laughs> than Zoom. <laughs> So does anybody have any final questions for Tim? No, this is great. Thank you, okay. Tim. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, sure. thanks. Both of you, Mary and Tim. Sure. And Mary, too. Thank, thank you. Mary. Well, next Mary, week. Yeah. yeah sorry. You orchestrate, orchestrated this whole thing. I'm the behind the scenes puppet master, and Tim's right. not the puppet. But um, right. anyway, the next week we're doing. Um, Gmail and contacts so that you can clean up your inbox if you're dealing with a lot of emails now where you're not having one-on-one -on -one conversations and um, send out, develop groups so you can send out an email to a lot of people with one click. So that will be same time next Tuesday. I will send a link out if you, if you have, if you got the, the inf the information through email from me, you'll get it, you'll get it next week as well. So, and I will be sending um, the recording of this video out to everyone whose email I have. There are a couple people who signed in without their, their names. So if you can put, before you leave, put in the chat box, your email address, and I'll make sure that you get a copy. So. Great, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. All right. See you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you.